The ceasefire is over. Israeli troops are trying to make quick work of its mission to get rid of Hamas militants on the Gaza Strip. ABC's Donetsk Delicatera is showing us how this is creating a problem for Palestinian civilians who say they're running out of safe places to go. Israel's defense forces stepping up their offensive against Hamas, confirming for the first time their ground forces are operating in every part of the Gaza Strip. Since the temporary truce collapsed Friday, the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry reporting more than 700 Palestinians have been killed, with more than 15,000 dying since the start of the war. This young boy, Saeed, kissing the body of his brother, Mohammed, as workers try to zip the body bag around him. Children are being decimated here. There are rows and rows of children with the wounds of war. The IDF telling people to move further south, but UNICEF says nowhere is safe. The U.S. urging Israel to help protect innocent civilians. Too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. If you drive them into the arms of the enemy, you replace a tactical victory with a strategic defeat. U.S. officials also emphasizing it was Hamas's terror attack on Israel and the slaughter of 1,200 people that began the war. <laughs> Meanwhile, more than 130 hostages still being held by Hamas. Keith Siegel is one of eight Americans still believed to be in captivity. His wife, Aviva, released days ago during that week-long ceasefire. We want whatever needs to be done, done quickly to allow Keith and all the hostages to be returned. And Israel's defense minister telling ABC News the war in its current intensity will likely last another couple of months. The next phase of the war will last multiple months to take out pockets of resistance. In de la Quatera, ABC News, Tel Aviv. Happening today, a family who lost their son to an opioid overdose headed to the Supreme Court in an attempt to make the company pay up. At issue, the fact that the owners of the opioid company were given immunity from lawsuits. The company, Purdue, filing a $6 billion bankruptcy, which is where victims in the communities ravaged by opioid crises were to get their settlement money. But part of that settlement deal gives the company, the Sackler family, the owners, immunity protection from lawsuits. The family wants to keep the Sackler family on the hook. In a way, this case is about deterrence. It's about holding corporate leaders and owners uh, accountable for their business decisions. If approved, the bankruptcy settlement would pay $6 billion to individual families, state health programs, and Native American tribes over the next 18 years. But if the deal is blocked, legal experts say this could set a precedent for how corporate bankruptcy cases are settled. With Megan's traveling to get together with family and friends for the holidays, respiratory illnesses are climbing across parts of the country. There is an increased number of children going to local emergency rooms with cough, fever, and runny nose. The CDC says 11 states, one of them is Texas, seeing very high levels of respiratory illnesses and the activity they bring, including RSV, the flu, the common cold, and COVID. When you have um, outbreaks, what we're looking at is trying to see as if there's similarities. So is it just a coincidence that this many children had pneumonia or are they all having it from the same thing? So here's the good news. Children's hospitals across the country tell ABC that many are not seeing the same levels of RSV compared to this time last year. A New York Times investigation showing air traffic controllers are overworked and they're at a bigger risk of making mistakes. The New York Times says air traffic employees submitted hundreds of complaints over the past two years to an FAA hotline. Those complaints included staffing shortages, mental health problems, and unpleasant working conditions. The Times uncovered at least seven reports of controllers who fell asleep while they were on duty. Five complaints were for employees working while under the influence. The FAA responded saying the story does not reflect the high level of safety of the country's airspace. The FAA says, quote, flying has never been safer due in large part to our air traffic controllers, unquote. In your Monday Money News, a new report from Harvard's Center of Housing Studies reveals that more than 765,000 older Texans are struggling to keep a roof over their heads. The problem expected to persist as residents get older. Data shows the number of Texas households headed by people 65 or older are spending 30% or more of their income on housing costs. In San Antonio, that number is 55%.
AARP Texas says they are backing zoning reforms in Austin that would allow up to three affordable housing units in most neighborhoods. The Austin City Council is said to vote on that proposal this week. Mortgage rates are dropping for the sixth straight week and rates are going to get even lower. New data from Freddie Mac says that the 30 year fixed rate mortgage fell to an average of 7.22 percent. A year ago, the average 30 year fixed rate was 6.49 percent. Freddie Mac says this is due to market sediment shifting over the last month. This is actually good news for potential home buyers as purchase application activity is on the rise. Economic growth in the U.S. was stronger in the third quarter than previously estimated. The fact underscores that the economy's remarkable resilience in the face of elevated inflation and high borrowing costs earlier this year. Gross domestic product rose at an annualized rate of 5.2 percent from July through September. After a robust third quarter, the U.S. economy is widely expected to grow at a much slower rate in the final month of the year as interest rates remain at a 22-year high. The U.S. Commerce Department saying that while inflation is easing up, consumers are still holding back on making big spending expenditures. The core personal consumption expenditures price index rose two tenths of a percent last month, not including gas and food prices, ending up 3.5 percent for the year. It's also the lowest annual rate since April of 2021. So here's the good news. We shouldn't be using too much heat or too much AC with these temperatures the way they are. And at night, throw on a blanket. You'll be all right. It'll look a little chilly, but you'll be good. So save yeah. the heat, right? Yeah. I, you know, I just left the door open yesterday so the dog could run in and out. Oh, yeah? The only problem with that is there's still mosquitoes. Still notice them flying in the house. It's... A mosquito? Yeah, they're still around. They don't go anywhere in the winter. <laughs> they're still there. They don't hibernate? No, they don't, unless it gets really cold. And it's been chilly, but not cold, cold. 47 in San Antonio this morning, 45 Bernie Stage, 38 in Kerrville this morning, 41 Pleasanton. And uh, bigger picture here, we did have some 30s on the map. Places like Carrizo Springs got down to 39 this morning. It was chilly. It was, but we're warming up really nicely today. It's going to be one of those big flip kind of days uh, in the sense that the temperature is going to go from 47 all the way up to 72 this afternoon. That's the forecast at least. 25 degree swing is uh, what we're calling for today and that is because the air is dry and skies are clear, you'll get those kind of flips in the temperature. Uh, speaking of this time of year, boy, the colors have been really nice lately. I want to show you another KSAT Connect picture. This is down near New Braunfels and look at the colors. Man, it's been great. I've been noticing some of the red oaks really starting to look beautiful, but we are finally getting that color change here around San Antonio with the trees. So check it out. Uh, we are finally, finally seeing that. Uh, we are going to get some cooler weather if you're a fan of that coming up this weekend. Another cold front heads our way. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead, if you're already feeling stressed from the holidays, already, well, we have some ways to manage that. And the box office is filling the losses from the writer strike. Plus, some political movies are in the works. Coming up. Industry analysts say movie sales slowed down in November. Movie theaters grossed about $553 million during last month. That's a 12% drop from a year ago. Half a billion less compared to pre-pandemic levels. The long Thanksgiving weekend used to attract big crowds to the movies. Ooh, not this year. This year, the research group says Comscore theaters only grossed $173 million. Sebastian Stan, you see the resemblance? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's he's now been cast to play a young Donald Trump in the film entitled The Apprentice. And Borat actress Maria Bakalova will play Ivana Trump. Succession's Jeremy Strong will be playing Roy Khan, the lawyer who Trump considered a mentor in his early years. It said this is a new movie. Then he hit theaters in 2025. I bet you that one draws him in. Yeah, that might work for him. A movie on George Santos is in the works. HBO says it will be based off of the book, The Fabulous, The Lying, Hustling, Grifting, Stealing, and Very American Legend of George Santos. 
Users on Twitter, X, are already making their own cast, saying SNL's Bowen Yang yes. would make a great Santos. Or New Girl in the Office's Nelson Franklin, Ursula. Um, I'm going to see both of those movies, <laughs> but I agree with the SNL depiction of Santos. That is, and The Fabulous is a great name. I don't even see why at this point we need to make movies. I mean, uh, just the, the whole <laughs> really? thing is like a reality show. It's, it's like show. a docudrama. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Hands, anything. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we go outside for your blue skies. Temperatures right now 66 degrees. The low this morning 47, as we said. Records are 85 and 26. The years are 1928 and 1886. Yeah, we kept records way back then, 1886. Uh, no freezing temperatures are in the forecast. In fact, it's going to be pretty darn nice going forward. Another look at that seven day for you. Come on. There are some kids who are getting tours of the station here at KSAT, and they're taking advantage of the weather because we've had like three or four groups, and they all bring their lunch, and they go out and sit on, on the patio out there. Well, yeah. that's what everybody should be doing. I, I, you notice everybody's in a better mood. Like, the, it, it, the sun is out, perfect temperatures, it's not windy. Scientifically proven that puts you in a better it mood. It puts you in a better mood. It just is. Uh, now, I know there are some uh, December purists that say, I want some cloudiness, I want some cold. Uh, we're not going to get it just yet. Uh, it is sunny and nice, and that's going to be really the case this week. Uh, I want to show you temperatures across the country. Now, the extremes are on the east coast, 24 in Caribou, Maine this morning with snow falling there. So that is true winter time up there. Uh, you get down to Florida, though, it is 84 in Miami. Miami continues to be the nation's hot spot, and that will not change today. Texas, somewhere in the middle. We're enjoying some modified air here. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s, some dry air. 55 in Lubbock, 59 Abilene, 61 Waco, 72 in Corpus Christi, uh, but 66 here in town, and it feels great out there. Uh, we've got dew points in the low 30s. The air is dry. East northeast really wind at 9. We've had some drier air work in just this morning. So with dry air, a lot of times, as you know, you get it uh, to warm up pretty quickly. You also get it to cool down very quickly. So by the afternoon, it'll feel pretty good outside. 72, and then once the sun goes down, you'll see the numbers fall off quickly. 58 at 7 o'clock, 54, 8 p.m. Then we're down into the 40s again tonight. So it'll be jacket weather to start your Tuesday. And then you can pretty much go t-shirts by the afternoon, just like today. Water vapor shows we've got dry air funneling in here in the mid levels and upper levels of the atmosphere. So it's very stable. And this is that sort of conveyor belt of Pacific moisture that had been over us and created all those beautiful sunrises and sunsets that has pushed south towards deep south Texas. So we're going to be cloud free today. And we look at the big picture here. There's not a lot to look at honestly across the country still a fairly quiet weather pattern with some rain across the Appalachians and you've got some snow and rain across the northern plains and a little bit more active weather in the Pacific Northwest certainly nothing here across Texas though and I don't expect anything the next couple of days a weather pattern with a ridge of high pressure over us will keep us pretty quiet as we get into Thursday moisture begins to return out ahead of our next storm system so you'll start to see more clouds on Thursday probably on Friday too and then by Saturday we'll watch our storm system push a front through I wish I could tell you this brings rain with it it does not it could bring a couple showers but nothing that's going to be uh, significant in any stretch of the imagination the bigger story with this will be gusty winds behind it in cooler weather for Sunday. Uh, probably some gusty winds still on Sunday as well. Rain chances, as we pointed out last half hour, minimal. And it's Saturday. If we're going to get anything, that would be a stray shower with that front. It's just, it's, it's not going to really put any rain in our rain gauge, unfortunately. And rainfall this year, we were getting close to a foot below average. Uh, another rough year, two years in a row here that have just been brutal for us. We're at 18.9 inches. Now, we do have more rain than we did last year. There's that. Uh, but not by a whole lot. Del Rio's at 14.45. Austin's doing a little bit better, but we're below average really statewide. And the extended forecast, uh, some cool mornings, nice afternoons coming up. You'll see the mornings uh, moderate a little bit as we get more cloud cover and more humidity by Thursday into Friday. That front comes through, and then cool weather comes back. Sunday morning down to 42 with a high of 62 and sunny on Saturday. Thanks, Justin. The holidays can be full of fun and time with family, but they can also be pretty stressful. Yeah. CNN's Mandy Gaither has ways, though, that you could manage your stress during the holiday season. 
It's that time of year again. The lights, the memories, <gasps> the stress. You might be excited about certain things that are happening and also stressed and overwhelmed. And both of those things can exist in you at the same time. Licensed therapist Jody Baumstein says to first recognize what you feel because you can do something about it. Help manage holiday stress by giving yourself permission to do things differently. We often believe that because something has been done a certain way, for a long time, we can't break that tradition. But the reality is sometimes something isn't gonna work for us and it doesn't mean that we'll never do it again, but maybe we don't do it this year. If you're feeling overwhelmed, Baumstein says to set boundaries. Think about what's most important for your family. She says it's okay to say no. A lot of times we don't wanna do that. We feel like we don't really have a good reason or we don't wanna upset someone, but the reality is, that no can be a full sentence and you don't need to justify it or explain it. <laughs> Finally, Baumstein says to allow yourself to be in the moment because holidays can pass by quickly, ground yourself. You are literally using your senses to bring you into the present moment or the here and now. And that allows you to enjoy that time. Because what we don't wanna happen is we plan all this great stuff, but then we get to the end of the holiday season and realize we don't really remember it. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Get out and enjoy the weather. That'll keep your spirits up. And this could too. The Animal Defense League of Texas is participating in the Bissell Pet Foundation's Empty the Shelters Holiday Hope event. It's from now until the 17th. You can see all these cuties on your screen right there. They're all animals waiting for a warm home during the holidays, and they all come spayed, neutered, vaccines are done, microchipped, parasite treatment, and a starter bag of HEB pet food. So all adult cats and dogs have a reduced adoption fee of $35. You can see all the available pets on ADL's website at adltexas.org, or you can swing by one of their locations on Nacogdoches Road or on Tuleta Drive near the San Antonio Zoo. There are several other shelters around San Antonio looking for you to help them adopt some of these dogs and cats, like the Humane Society, SAPA, and ASC, to name just a few, are also participating in this reduced adoption fee event. The UTSA Roadrunners get a chance to change a streak when they go bowling later on this month. Roadrunners head football coach Jeff Trailer are going bowling before Christmas again. The Roadrunners will play in their fourth straight bowl game. They're taking on Marshall. They'll be in the Frisco Bowl. That's in the Dallas area. Unfortunately for Jeff Trailer's squad, they haven't gotten a bowl game win. They are 0-3 over the past three seasons. That's something they're probably tired of hearing about. I did go over with our team. There's only a few things left we can do here historically. Uh, you know, we haven't been to a New Year's Six, and we didn't do that again, and we haven't won a bowl game yet. Uh, there's some other things I'm sure you guys will remind me of, but those are things that come to the top of my head that we could knock off if we could get this first bowl. All right, well, hopefully they can knock that off then. The Roadrunners will have their hands full against the thundering herd of Marshall. Kickoff December 19th, 8 o'clock, Toyota Stadium, and that's in Frisco. Back here in San Antonio, the Alamo City, the Arizona Wildcats are coming to town to take on Oklahoma in the 31st annual Alamo Bowl. This is a top 15 matchup featuring Arizona on a six game winning streak. The Sooners on a three game run for both teams. Full week of different activities around the city is going to happen. It's a perfect way for the programs and their fan bases to get comfortable before kickoff. Both teams have played twice in their history with the series tied at one win each meeting number three Thursday. December 28th, 8.15 p.m. at the Dome. Tickets are on sale now. And of course, if the weather holds kind of like this, ooh, that's a great time for the Alamo Bowl. Oh, yeah. This is good stuff. So, you know the river's going to be flooded with people down there. Mm -hmm. Golf course is packed. Always. Good times. Christmas also finds that celebrate, it finds that celebrate San Antonio and tips for decorating your tree. It's all coming up. Plus an easy holiday meal on a budget for less than 50 bucks. Mike and Fiona are at Market Square for SA Live.
you need a host or hostess gift for all those holiday parties, the Rustic Brush has some great ideas made by you, so they're priceless. Oh, and are you putting up the Christmas tree this weekend? Carla Reuter shares some great tips with Jen Plus. She gives us a wrap up <laughs> on how to make fancy <laughs> holiday bows and don't forget the hot chocolate. Carolina's Antique shares some creative San Antonio centric finds just in time for all of the Christmas holidays. And how about some holiday dinner ideas from Fisher and Weezer, this time a pork roast. Ooh, that sounds good. And all those great sauces they have and everything. <laughs> yeah. So that and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Stick around.